Damn kiss guy. Yep. Kiss guy. Kiss guy is the best of all guys. His face was falling off because it was latex. And he. Oh, yeah, you should probably drinking just watch game. the movie. Yeah. It's not Great. a movie. Watch the video. I'm sorry. Oh, it's, goodness. It's not a video. movie. It's a video. And you got to make a drinking game out of it because it's safer ish than hot lava. Or that other game we used You can to get play. hurt pretty bad playing The Floor is Lava. Yeah. American we've, Presidents. We've American Presidents that. from that Just Just show. So, anyways, you guys, if you really want to, you can see us pre-gaming to Kiss Guy on our Patreon. But I don't like to push the Patreon. But you could help us with our monthly podcast bills. That would be cool. It'd be great. Boot, we're on episode 34. We have some new school thugs. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Who are these people? They're thugs. They're thugs that listen to us. Nice. So, uh, we have Cindy Lou, I believe from the Grand Rapids area. And we have Cheryl H., whom I work with and said she binge listened to us. I th- nice. That's the very first that's a big compliment. binge listener that I know of. That's a huge compliment. Thank you guys nice. so, so have, much. Yeah. Also have new Facebook friends, Scoot, a.k.a. Scooter, a.k.a. Hooters' son. Uh, oh, nice. I know him. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Such a great guy. He's introduced me to numerous podcasts that I love. So that's super cool. And have to give a shout-out to our old-school thug. <laughs> We're not even that old Is this yet. Just the Colorado girl. But we have, yeah, one Lady, of them. I'm we sh- have I'm two so Colorado ladies. This one is Michelle H. And uh, we've been chatting and creating a friendship. It's just been super freaking cool. Nice. And she ordered masks Michigan Murders in Music Masks. You got it, folks. Go on to the Etsy.com, hit up Beat Rocker. And you can get your own masks. Yeah, he makes them. It's cool. We know this guy, Morgan. Also, He's pretty cool. Dude, last night I looked up our five. Uh, I looked up our reviews. Yeah, I what didn't we doing? look at anything below the five stars. I'm not gonna lie. I just act like we just got all five stars from everybody. <laughs> so, I mean, that's what JB Mooney would do. Well, yeah. What who wants to hear the JBM negative stuff? If there is. do. You know, she, uh, Mary is a buckle bunny. I am such a fucking cowboy whore. Yep. Uh, five stars given to us by Erica0987 and also 35 Dozen. I am curious, 35 Dozen, Where? how did you come up with that name? You guys hey, are the best new and old school thugs. Thank you. If you want a mask, go to Etsy, look up Beat Rocker. You can order a mask of Michigan Murders Music or any other mask he has available, right? He's got quite a selection. Yeah, look just take a look. Look at you all fancy tonight. Oh, uh, you know, I thought Today, I'd dress up a little bit for this you. This afternoon, you look fine. Oh, thanks. Is your pipe? It's piped? over there. Is your I have pipe a chew going packed? right now. I'll you. Oh, wait. What? JB chews. Okay, yeah. it's okay. It's, mm-hmm. it's okay. It's, we're, we're in Michigan. What are you? <sighs> for fuck's sakes. Mm-hmm. You know, winners got to do whatever they want to do. I'm doing what I want to do right We're now. We're winners. Chicken, don't say it, Mary. Okay, you guys. I, I'm going to preface this two-part episode, which we are going to put out to you all this weekend. We yes. have to do it in two parts because it's it's a great story, but it's we long. We are also putting it out 
there's details that we, we really need to include, and that just makes it extra long. Okay. This. <laughs> I said extra long. <laughs> Bam. My dick. <laughs> is extra long come down to my knees shish there was a period of time in my life where i did not do the true crime stuff because i had three kids any parent or mother out there will tell you i don't want to see no i already can't i already don't know how to raise this kid i don't need to know about all the sick fuckers out there right so i did live in cedar springs when this situation happened Mm. i knew very little of it saw the posters saw the signs saw i saw the signs focus (laughs) oh shit back i'm back now that all my kids are grown i looked it up and i was holy shit there's way more to the story than just a teenage beautiful young lady and her baby daughter girl who was almost two years old disappeared yeah very creepy bad (sighs) story so bad however there's a minimal there's a chance that baby shannon could be alive and if there's anything that any of our podcasts can do and i know there's other true crime podcasts out there you're On the same list. Like, if there's anything we can do, it's spread the knowledge, spread what we know. If she was sold off, we got to know that too, right? Right. Okay. So, Boo, we're going to talk about who. I'm sorry. That was a long intro, you guys. Not sorry, but I'm... Sorry. I thought it was going to go on for another 15 minutes. Oh, fuck off. Marvin Charles Gabrion. Resides on death row, federal penitentiary, Terra Haute, Indiana. Everybody's like, I'm pretty sure back a few episodes ago, you guys told us Michigan didn't have death row. Oh, but he's in Indiana. Yeah, and we still don't have death row. And this is a Michigan and murder story, so how did that happen? Oh, we're going to get into that. Oh, yeah. Here's your drink. It has something to do with. Federal land. Yeah, boy, get it. Green, green, green. Yep. Marvin Gabrion did not have a good start in life. He was born the fifth out of six kids, and they all lived in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Marvin's father was extremely abusive. And his mother had mental I- issues. I like to say issues. Yes. She was she was a little Looney Tunes. Okay. Ugh. I can't say that anymore, can I? Yeah, we can. Okay. It's it is what it is. I'm a little Looney Tunes, I'm not gonna lie. The parents frequently left the kids home alone. Like six kids home alone to fend for themselves. Party Pretty much. At Party. one point when Marvin was young, he became ill. But his I mean, dad really wouldn't Ill. take him to the doctor. Finally, he had to because his fever was so bad. And yeah, and then they when they did, had, do you know what, what happened? Yeah, they discovered he had pneumonia, and they had to remove a weird little piece of leather or something out of his lungs. He had something in there. It's not actual leather, but he had, so, yeah, leather-like. Yeah, yeah, his n- pneumonia was so bad that they... It's just pneumonia. Oh Dumbass. Fuck off. <laughs> At one point... <laughs> At one point, his mom took his younger brother and went to live with another man for a while. Just, I'm out. I'm going to go live with this guy. Forget about the rest of my five children that I have. And eventually, mom had a nervous Fucking breakdown. Fucking mom's like that. <laughs> and the kids were taken from the home and placed Sorry, in foster just care. Sorry, my mic. They were. It was known that when the parents were drinking, they were physical fighters. Butcher fucking knives came out. Butcher knives. Knock down, bitch. drag out. We're not talking the little out. pear knife it's, from the dollar store. We're like talking a butcher knife. Live or die kind of fights. It was ugly. I can't imagine. They both had extra marital sexual innuendos going on. I don't yeah. even know what that just meant. As my grandpa would say, they were pissing next to the pot. Oh. <laughs> For real, it's really <laughs> gross when you think when you dissect that statement. Well, 
It's kind of a gross thing to do. Oh, you got me on that one. So Mom, Mom would also have the kids siphon gas. I just want to say that at one point, my brother was in charge of watching me, and my parents were working, and we wanted to ride our goddamn snowmobiles, and there was no gas in them. How dare our parents leave us with no gas? Because they knew that you wouldn't be able to ride them unless you were crafty to so siphon gas and mix we, some two-cycle oil. He tried to it. siphon it, and he couldn't. So then I was like, look at me. I can do this. I think I was eight. I inhaled so much fucking gas. I don't know if we got in trouble. I just remember being really sick. So don't make your kids siphon gas. Just buy them some bucks. gas. They're going to go take the snowmobiles They're gonna out They're going to do anyway. it anyways the second you turn around. Oh, wait, what? So oh, one time. I heard we're riding those. When Marvin burned trash too close to the house. Oh, no, he his didn't. His dad rammed his head either into a wall or a two-by-four or something, depending on where you read what. There's some conflicting stories here. If you know anything about any kind of killers. Head, head injuries. injuries. Mm-hmm. Look it up. Eventually, the family would end up living in White Cloud. Boot, give me your hand. Okay. Where's the cloud of the white? It is right up about here. If you keep going up M37, you'll get to Baldwin eventually. He is so going directly below like his pinky and his where ring I pinched my finger. Hand in the, yeah, it's on the on the west side of the state. Here. But lower by your wrist. Well, I know this is hard, you guys, because you can't see us, and that's my wrist okay. Is Indiana. We're way up here. Oh. What's this We thing? live here. What's that pad of your left side pinky thing? It's above That's the... That's where I pinched my hand a couple days ago at work. I didn't, like, put a mark on my hand to show where a white cloud is. I think you did. I think you're okay. into this That's podcast actually about so much <laughs> that you cut about yourself. where it is. That you That's cut weird. yourself to show people, even though we can't actually show them. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the best. The family moved to White Cloud, which is not too far north of us. On the night of August 6th, 1996, Rachel had the opportunity to get away from being a great mom for a bit. So uh, we don't like to say a lot about our victims, but Rachel was a young mom of an almost two-year-old baby. We did say something about her, but she was Rachel was relatively young, I think. She was, she was getting her life together. Yeah, and she was 18. Back in the day, if you were 18 when you had a kid, oh, you were like an old maid already. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> and now if you're 18, you're like looked upon, yeah. oh my I God. I see people in their 40s with newborns, and I'm no, thinking, what? Near. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that? Oh, my God. <sighs> On the night of August 6th, she was picked up by a few friends. Wayne Davis, Mikey Gabrion. Yeah, Gabrion, you recognize that name? And his uncle, Marvin Gabrion. They all went to play cards. At one point during the game, Marvin grabbed Wayne by the throat <laughs> in an overheated situation. Someone has a little bit of a temper. He's like, I'm going to choke you, fucker. I don't know if that's what he said. I'm just envisioning. Marvin said he would take three people home. He went by Rachel's house. And Rachel's like, that was my house. And then he kicked out the other two boys from the car. Yeah, so they had to find their own ways home. They just used their little feet. He threatened to kill her baby in front of her. If she told anyone what he was about to do. Yeah, he... So she faked it to survive. Okay, wait. So he would take her home. He actually took her off the road about 300 feet, which is kind of an important detail. So he took her off the road into the woods. At first, she tried to comply and do the things that women are supposed to do to get the stupid motherfucker to stop raping you, like... Well, first she started to fight, and then she was like, I'm going to try to comply, and she did comply. But he still raped her numerous times in those woods, just like 300 feet off the road. Right. When she got home, she ran past Wayne and Mikey and hid in the bathroom with a hammer until Marvin was gone. I don't know if you guys remember Wayne and Mikey. They are the ones that had to get out of the car and walk home. We already told you that. God. 
She called her counselor and talked to her sister and decided to go to the hospital the next day when she went through the horrible steps after being raped. She then reported the rape charges to Marvin. He was eventually put in jail, and two weeks later, his pal Wayne post bond for him. One year later, literally two days before the trial against Marvin, Rachel goes on a date with John Weeks, who encourages her to bring her baby, baby Shannon, 11 months old. To her sisters and father, she seemed very happy to be going on this date, happy that Shannon was being included as the baby was a huge part of her life. She left her dad's house for the last time on June 3rd, 1997 in Cedar Springs, Michigan. The very next day, Dad gets a letter in the mail. It's Rachel's writing, and she states that she is in love and is running away to Arkansas with this guy. How did the letter get there so fast? This is a, a very strange thing, I, and it's as if she wasn't even in Arkansas. And later, the letters will have some, the stamps on the letters will be a, a key. When Rachel had gone on the date, the man never got out of the car, so nobody saw who it was or what he looked like. He just picked her up, and she busted out with the baby in its car seat and went on the date. In the meantime, court day arrives, and Rachel doesn't show up. The court date for Marvin, who was raping her. They can't find her. They think she's moved because of the letter, so the charges are dropped. Rachel also wrote this letters. Kind of fucked up. It is. Rachel also wrote letters to the judge and prosecutor saying she moved and wants to drop the rape charges. So they dropped them. Yeah. Another case in point where law fucking failed in a weird way. Why? Just because she's not around, don't drop the charges. And these, this, this envelope comes up again. It has a holographic stamp. I've never seen those. Have you? Oh, I, I've seen the holographic. I haven't things. seen the holographic. I've seen holographic stamps, but this is like almost like when I was a pen pal from Australia, their stamps were like printed into the envelope. Oh, neat. It was a separate stamp like ours are. Did you ever keep in touch with that person? No. I need to That'd find be kind of interesting. Person. That would be super cool. Yeah. Anyway, so this was like a ho- a, like one of those shiny. Like on your credit card. Yeah. One of those things. And it was in the stamp. She said that. She wants to stay in Arkansas forever, that she's happy and I'm good. Yeah, Don't some of her family was me. concerned. Some thought maybe she did this to get a better life, get away from things. Totally makes sense. I, yeah, I get it. One month later in Oxford Lake, boot, hand. Oh, Oxford Lake. Okay, here we go. Manistee National Forest area. Now we're up you guys have heard us over talk about a that. Ways, like right about there. Which is up east of Big Rapids, yep. but west of Bightley, if you want to look on a map. Basically, mm, right between Lake Michigan and Big Rapids. We've been there yeah, all the time. We camp all not, the way around We haven't been to area. Oxford Lake, but we're going to have to this summer. Oh, no, because the dogs. I know there's still a body out there. There's we'll probably, get to that. Oh, go yeah. on. Move, move. One month later. Oxford Lake, Manistee National Forest area, fishermen and a son find the body of Rachel. Sadly, she was floating in the lake. Uh, Duct tape around her eyes and face, arms bound behind her back, and 63 pounds of concrete blocks with chains secured around her with padlocks. Padlocks is a, a key thing here. Another key thing is that because of the way her body was found, Officials knew that she she was alive when she was tossed over the boat in that way, and the only air passage she had was her nose. Yeah. Fucking horrible. So she was alive when they just dumped yeah. her over the side of the boat. And she, she like filled with gases and floated to the fish surface. that you didn't mean to catch. That's, well, that's horrible. disgusting. So we haven't talked about Kim. Uh, Kim is baby Shannon's baby daddy's mom. So she's the paternal the grandma. Grandma, yeah. Of baby Shannon. Kim heard about the body being found on the news, and she immediately called the police. The body's fingerprints matched Rachel's. 
Kim had a friend in law enforcement who suggested she call the FBI and state that Rachel had been kidnapped. The FBI comes out and starts searching the Oxford Lake area where cadaver dogs body was found. Yep, they brought in cadaver dogs, and those dogs were going nuts. There were more human remains in the area, and those those poor dogs, they were like, oh, oh, oh. And they were probably in heaven as that's mm-hmm. their, Doing job. their job. There was a local fisherman that said it was like a, it wasn't a bottomless lake as in it was so deep. It was actually kind of a weird shallow lake, but the sand kept, would just keep the organic giving away. material was yeah, and just so keep giving away yeah. and giving away and giving away. The anchors would give sink it away, to give it away, give it away. Now they, they may have exaggerated, but 150 feet. Yeah, that, that's a deep lake. I don't. We've had some anchors sink far deeper. Oh, they wouldn't than even reach the bottom. We thought they would. Yeah. Then I got scared and I was like, "He's gonna gotta throw me over the out of edge. Here. I gotta go." <laughs> and I went like Scooby Doo and or Jesus. Why, why are you asking me about these bricks I brought along? I'm kind of funny. And, these and chains. I got out. That was so funny. <laughs> oh my god. Nationwide nationwide alert. nationwide alert was issued for Baby Shannon as there was literally no sign of her. The people the, closest to her were looked at as... Okay, okay everybody right. close to her was looked at, like baby dad, Shannon's baby daddy, you know, how they do. None Boyfriends, of them s- seem to have the uh, M.O. M.O.? They didn't have M.O.? Modus operandi. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. FBI turned to Marvin to question him, but guess what? Marvin's been missing. And neighbors claim when the FBI went and chatted with them that they had not seen Marvin nor his hired handyman, John Weeks, well, for weeks. <laughs> well played. The blocks at his house matched those. Cement blocks. The cement blocks that were found at the alleged murder site. Were also found at his home. They, they found keys that mm, strangely matched the locks that were used with the chains. Oh, my God. One lady was like, well, these li- keys are pretty, you know, they're master keys, and they all work. Um, come on. We're in a It's small too much of a coincidence. No. They weren't master keys. They just happened to. But it wasn't they, enough to arrest him. Mm-hmm. They learned that Marvin had numerous alter egos, bought and sold property in a very shady manner, including vehicles, insurance policies, and other people's names. You know what else they took note of? His fancy interior decorations. Oh my goodness, this is such a he hung up thing. curtains with motherfucking duct tape, bitches. Duct tape. That's why people call Michigan people hicks, is because of guys like this mm-hmm. motherfucker hanging up their ruining sheets. it for the rest of us. Not even curtains, probably a sheet or black hanging trash up bags. A Power Ranger <laughs> sheet with a duct tape curtain rod. I had a neighbor that used black. Trash bags as curtains on his front porch. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't very pleasing. (laughs) A few people in Marvin's life. Wait, did you say about the numerous alter egos? No. Police learned that Marvin had numerous alter egos, but sold properly, shadily, and vehicles, shadily. Insurance policies, shady. In other people's name, super shady. Oh, in the house he was living in, which is in Altona, Michigan. I don't know um, where that is. Don't ask me to hold up my hand. Okay, I won't. Thanks. But it was an Amish community. He was known as Robert Allen. A skid row transient who had been missing for two years. Robert Allen is also an important name that I hope I remember to say later. Marvin had legit taken over Robert Allen's life. He took over his identity and... And the few people in Marvin's life are all disappearing. Fucking dropping off like flies. John's girlfriend had not seen him since he went on a dope run to Texas. Dope run. With, with Marvin. Motherfucking Marvin. Mm-hmm. Took this guy in a dope run and... I'm going to blow up the earth. This guy never comes back. <laughs> people I just keep, you know, this is right before the trial, remember. These are all... People Potential that witnesses were there, mm-hmm. and, was, and suddenly they're all dying. 
Yeah. So two people Missing. are down, so now we're looking for Wayne. You know the shit who posted bail for him. Uh, apparently a, f- a good friend because he posted bail. I mean, you're some kind of friend if you don't post bail for your a bitch. So what's the body count now? Well, if we include Wayne, who they can't find, we're up to body count. Body count. Body count. I knew you were going to do that. Body count. I'm sorry, I can't help it. Three. Three. Okay. That's the magic number. Three. Also. It's the magic number. Still, everyone's still looking for Marvin. Yeah. Yo, let us know when you see Marvin. And it's small enough town where people let him know. So while the police were searching Marvin's house, I don't know. Yeah, it was his, a house. His house. Uh, they found pictures of scantily clothed children. Ugh. Did he take baby Shannon and sell her? That's a really big concern uh, you know, lately. Things got the... real weird, real, real um, dark. Okay, there really is a situation with kids being taken and. Family members come forward and state that he often camps near Hungerford Lake. Yep, Hungerford. That's what they name this lake. Which is near Big Rapids. When they get there, he's gone. However, this guy, he's he's kind of stupid. He, he left behind evidence. Firstly, I get so angry when I roll up on my favorite nature campsite and there's fucking trash there. Okay, he, he left baby diapers, a bar rat, some clothing, just things that, that could be... Tied to Rachel and baby Shannon, yeah. basically. Tips come in that money is being funneled by a post office box in New York. Something about a local land deal. It's more detailed, and if you want to look into it, feel free to. Turns Turn- out this is a sting. It's a sting, baby! Mm-hmm. They were yeah. on to him. They talked this guy into helping him set up this this uh, scam, this fraud he's doing with the guy from Grand Rapids who came up missing. That's the end of part one. We're going to leave you. There's so much more to this story. Oh, my God. I had no idea mm-hmm. how much more. No idea. Like I said. We I might do it tonight. Out yeah. of the, oh, Shoot, it's I, only 2.30. Oh, fuck. I can get this written in oh, no hell time. Yeah. So I had no idea. Like I said, back in the day, I had kids. Wasn't paying attention to true crime. No idea how thick the skin mm. on this plot gets. So, My while you're hurts. standing by. We need pads <laughs> for our seats. Can you guys send Don't us some tip that. money? <laughs> My butt hurts. Oh, that did sound wrong. <laughs> while you're standing by, we're going to leave you on a, a happy note. But, a bony but. And a happy ending. Happy Here note, is happy ending. the war between. Holy I shit. I love these guys. Great. Oh, guys. I say that all the time. I love oh, everybody. But these okay. guys are really good. Here we go. The war between. Let's get it, boot. Mm. Cheers. Right here. And now I've got to finish the next episode so we can do that for our listeners tonight. Let's do it.
the show wherever you listen. Michigan Murders and Music is produced by The Boots. Episodes are researched and written by Your Highness. Edited by Your Highness. Views and opinions are the sole stupidity of us and us alone. Don't blame others, please. Listen to this podcast could quite possibly cause major problems to your earballs and definitely will mess up your kids. Permission has been given to us by the bands and we've purchased our music on Bandcamp.com. Support your local music scene and all local music scenes.